Welcome back friends to my ongoing Skaven video. It's turn number 22. So we've got quite a lot going on, but um, nothing major I think. So we've got a magic site in Latian, Graveyard of the Damned, that's uh, two death gems a month, so very nice. Got a magic site found in Midland, another Graveyard of the Damned, two more death gems. We really have a crazy death gem income now. It's like, we should really... um. Consider getting some spells and things and uh, working our way up death. It's uh, just got a fantastic income there. So we've got some Blood Slaves. Uh, Battle in the Swamp of Solitude. So this, uh, I talked to the Dark Elves and agreed to hand over this province to them in the interests of good ongoing relations. I had a province from them earlier. So they've just come in and taken out the province defence there. So that was just an amicable swap. We've got a Battle in Valrest. Uh, this is Empire attacking... The Dark Elves, we sent our scout over there to have a look. And a pretty significant force here. So we've got... Oh, that's interesting. So we've got three infantrymen lying at the front and some spearmen as well. And then behind them we've got state crossbows, uh, experienced ones too. And then some great swords and one of their national heroes. Uh, the great swords are pretty tasty and again these are experienced ones. But um, very nice protection. And then behind them we've got... Luther Huss, the voice of Sigmar. So pretty nice, and I think he has a yeah Dominion spreader. So um, up against them, we have a massive block of Doomfire Warlocks. These are 50 gold each, I think, so this is a significant investment. Just pause this for a second and see what's leading them. Yeah, we've also got some Sisters of Slaughter. Oh, a, court, a couple of Corsair Captains, that's the people who've been sailing them over. And then we've got a mass of Harpies, um, which are very nice for, you know, they're flyers, so you can do attack rear with them. So what's going to happen here is, uh, so these guys have got damage reversal, um, as well as a Banefire Shield. So they are very unpleasant to attack, especially in melee. Damage reversal means if you don't pass a magic resistance roll against 12, the posed roll, then the damage that you did to them, instead of being done to them, is done back to you. So even against uh, crossbows and things, when the crossbows fire at them, the crossbow bolt will disappear and reappear and hit the crossbowman in the face, basically. Um, yeah, very strong, and I think I may have made them a little bit too strong. And the fact that there's loads of them here, I don't fancy the Empire's chances. So let's watch. Yes, yeah, so they crash in, doing just tearing that front line of infantry apart. And uh, you can see when those crossbow bolts were hitting, a, a bunch of the shots went back and hit the crossbowmen. It looks like a little kind of jagged line of lightning that comes out. In go the harpies. Yeah, this is not looking good for the Empire. We'll see if Luther has manages to escape alive. But one of the problems the Empire has here is that they're taking these uh, magic resistance. So these guys have been hit by their own crossbow bolts, basically. But um, they're taking these magic resistance rolls, and they've got basic magic resistance of 10, which is what a normal human has. But then because they're in the magic scale, they get minus one, which is really exacerbating the problem they're having with these uh, Doom Firewall looks. There's the Sisters of Florida whipping their whips. And there's Luther Huss with his bodyguard. Don't think you're looking like you're going to do too well, my friend. Maybe due to his magic resistance, he does have... Oh, looks like he's going to escape. Well done, Luther Huss, managing to escape. So they keep their uh, the voice of Sigma, Luther Huss. Uh, ten great swords is pretty nasty for them, and these were kind of experienced troops they lost here, so not great. And they only lost one of their Doomfire Warlocks, and you can see 75 kills. Really, really good. Uh, maybe just too strong for uh, for 50 gold, to be honest. So I'll, uh, I'll have to review that. Then we've got a battle in Workinum. This is um, Slanesh attacking and ousting a very small uh, bit of Nehekara. They're basically done now, Nehekara. Uh, pretty much been eliminated. Um, and yeah, the Slanesh are just picking up um, province from them. Vulturing, as people say in the Dominions community. And then we've got a battle in the Mines of Fortune. This is the cave fort. Uh, so it's yeah, very typical lineup from the Chaos Dwarves. Let's just look at what they're casting, actually. So we've got a bunch of Earth Power, Legions of Steel, Summon Lesser Fire Elemental. That's good to see that they're not summoning full-size Fire Elementals, or I'd know that they would have... Um, 
Conjuration uh, 5. So they've got Conjuration 3, I think it is, for the smaller fire elementals. These are good because they're ethereal, they can pass through the walls, and they're good for clearing through this chaff. These um, scorpions in particular, the, the uh, Nehekara can just pump out huge numbers of these, but because they're uh, length zero weapons, they get hit by the fire shield on the fire elemental. So yeah, this archer fire is not really going to do anything to the in infernals. Um, let's move a bit closer. But god, look at the number of scorpions they're out able to output. So this is a national holy spell for them, so their priests can just summon these swarms of scorpions. And they do have these big disadvantages, these scorpions, in that they're very, very weak. Um, if they do sting, they have a weak poison they can apply, which is, you know, is good if they can get it in. It does a good bit of extra damage, but it's hard for them to break through the armor, obviously. They've only got four piercing damage, they're very unlikely to break through the infernal's armor. Um, they're mindless. But they are undead, so they can be banished. And because they're so small and have so few hit points, the uh, banishment that the Chaos Dwarf Priest is using is just cutting through them, and it can't you know, cause any friendly fire. This is just a very bad matchup for the um, Nehekarans, because the uh, Fire Glaives also just have these big blasts of flame that can hit multiple targets. And then they've got all the priests there casting Banish. So uh, I think this is going to be pretty one-sided. I'm just going to put this on max speed. It's still, even with a good matchup like this, it takes them a long time to get through those scorpions. Yeah, through they go. They don't stand a chance there. I think a few fire glaives died there. Um, ten, yeah, so killed a decent number of fire glaives. You know, that's um, 350 gold, I think. Yeah, 35 gold each. But that fortress belongs to them now. So then we've got some events. We've got uh, Mushrod gets attacked by a Barbarian Horde, which is where we sent our god, so that should be dealt with. Uh, finally, we get one of these plague events that's an upside to it, which is if we get some gold, the population is still going down. Um, and then we get a massive population decrease in Feral Woods. This is, uh, this is not good stuff. But, um, oh well, such is life. So then we have uh, the Barbarians attacking Mushwood. My god's here, so this should be extremely straightforward. Uh, you can see I've got her on summon earth power, uh, stone skin, and then she's going to cast legions of steel on herself. There we go. So her end protection is 29, so virtually unassailable. Huge amounts of fear and loads of repel. Barbarians do not stand a chance of getting through that. So we can just put this on super fast and you'll just see her kind of do a jig as she repels them and slaughters them. Yeah, she did take a hit there. That's interesting. Let's take a quick look at the log. So you can do that by clicking on the unit and then pressing V to see their individual log. Um, so lots of repels. She gets hit with a short bow. Here we go. Hit the, with a great sword for two points of damage. So this is where you can't completely lo rely on repel. If you imagine that she had low protection, she could take quite a nasty uh, hit there. So yeah, it, it's good to have layers of, um, you know, um, Things that decrease damage, things that avoid you taking hits, things that avoid you taking damage. That's really what you want on a thug or a super combatant. Um, we caught a ogre scout, and we caught the monster boar that was the, creating all of the. Um, let's just watch this piggy roast, just out of interest. So this is what was causing all of this unrest. Um, you know, fifteen unrest a turn horrible things monster boars uh people can cast it on you as a spell but it's very rare for to actually do that it's basically an event that happens so in he goes but that just gets absolutely roasted i think we lose some rats yeah eight giant rats are well and then a lot of patrolling to bring down the uh i mean this is killing large amounts of my population which isn't great but on the other hand by getting that unrest way down uh we get our gold flowing in from those lands again um so probably worth doing. So this turn I'm mainly forging things, I'm moving position, I'm still interested in uh, attacking Altdorf, in fact I've basically decided that I am going to attack Altdorf because I know that um, down here the Dark Elves are doing well and I just saw them win this big battle, uh, well big enough, it probably means Altdorf is just going to commit more things to fighting them and that's going to allow me to sneak in and do a big surprise attack on them. Well, I'm hoping it'll be a surprise attack. So over here I am building, um, oh sorry, on the throne I am building a lab um, to go with the fort that I'm building. I'm building up forces on my border and some of those are starting to move in. So we're sending in, uh, you know, 
Storm Vermin Council Guard Clan Rats and uh, some um, Doom Flare teams, Clan Rats and Sensor Bearers. In fact, I might move one of those Doom Flares over there. And a few weapons teams to go with them, although I'm not super keen on the weapons teams firing away at my expensive troops. If I'm just fighting province defense, uh, I'm probably going to try and avoid using those too much. I might just set them at the back and tell them to attack or stay behind. Sending in more troops here, so I want a good number and I want to be able to either go for the capital or very quickly take this fort. Skaven are excellent at taking forts because uh, even their lowly clan rats have a siege bonus of one because they're all burrowing animals. And uh, yeah, just fantastic at getting into forts and taking them. Our god is moving back, and so we're forging uh, Skull Mentors. We've put the Earth Boots on our Earth 2 guy to bring him up to Earth 3, and now he's forging uh, a Dwarven Hammer. So I want at least, prob I'm probably going to have two Dwarven Hammers, to be honest, and they're just going to be going constantly building things like Skull Mentors and giving us the discount on that, and they'll soon pay for themselves. We've deployed our Skull Mentors we've already built on things that are efficient researchers, and they're just going to sit there researching for the rest of the game. And we're also forging some new gear for our god because uh, gear is okay, but it's going to be a bit outdated at this point. I want to rely more on protection than on repel. I want to give her increased magic resistance because instant kill spells will be start flying around soon. So to that end, I am forging elemental armor. Uh, that's going to give her a broad set of resistances and high protection, higher protection than the armor she's currently wearing. And then I am also some forging going on up here. Uh, Oh no, sorry, I've deployed the um, Sanguine Dowsing Rods to send my guys off to Blood Hunt. And uh, I'm forging with my Grace here, who has unfortunately become diseased through being in this place that has a disease site. So it's an interesting thing going on. So let me, let me go back. I'm forging an amulet of anti magic. That's going to replace the Burning Pearl, and that's just going to give her high magic resistance. And I might not always want that equipped with her, but I'll want a scout to accompany her carrying it so I can switch it around if I'm worried about her having to take magic resistance checks. So the. It's annoying that this caster got diseased, um, but an interesting thing here is I have searched on two fire, two astral, three holy, and two death. There is definitely something here causing death and disease. It's a site, it's not an event. I don't know what it is though. Um, I'm going to have to look in the log. You can use the mod inspector to find out which sites cause that kind of thing. I suspect it might be a water one. Uh, because this is river adjacent. I know there is a water one that causes it, but there's also a blood one that could be uh, a blood site that causes disease. So I'm recruiting a Pestilence Plague Priest in the hopes of getting one that's got a blood two, possibly. Um, yeah, gonna gonna search for blood there. I could send my god, but I think I kind of want her up here to, in case things are get hot with Altdorf or possibly over on the other flank. So yeah, just kind of maneuvering some troops around. We've patrolled most of the unrest way here, but I'm going to get rid of the rest of it. We've got rid of the monster boar. Uh, oh, the reason that I knew this was a monster boar, even if I, like, well, it's basically from experience, but uh, if I hadn't known that, you can select a province and then press I, and that shows you the chronicle. Um, so we can see that it was uh, conquered by Skaven Blight in year one. But before then, this is before we owned the province at all, but the province, the people in the province will still tell us what's happened to them. Um, so they tell us a monster boar is afoot. A werewolf was generated, that's interesting, or at least donated gold. Uh, and this is when it was conquered by Bretonia. So you can see the whole chronicle of the of a province. And, you know, some of them, uh, as long as you own it, some of them can have some quite interesting things to say. Like uh, if we look at White Peaks, see it was um, conquered by Bretonia. They found some magic gems. They've got a magic item from it, apparently. And it was conquered back by them. Uh, or it was got by us. It doesn't say when we conquered it because why would we be interested in that? Yeah, so generally speaking, I'm recruiting another Grace here because I'm still trying to get to S3. Uh, that's Astral 3. Still recruiting Council Guard. And up here, I'm recruiting just more Clan Rats. I'm getting another Molder Mutate. I want him to take a Sanguine Dowsing Rod and do more Blood Hunting. I'm going to want my Blood Economy to start, get, start rolling very soon. Research-wise, still going for Conjuration level 4 to get Vermintide, uh, and I'll decide probably next turn where I'm going next. It might just be going for Conjuration 5, although that's quite a long way. Um, an interesting thing that we want to consider is just looking at the schools and then filtering just by death, because we've got so many death gems. So if I press D, that filters to all the uh, death spells. 
So we can see if I get four and five. The only really interesting thing I get here is uh, Vermintide and you know, Ghost Grip, maybe for combat. We could start reviving Bane Lords. We can get to death four fairly easily. Uh, and they can make great bugs. You know, we can equip various items on those. So that might be something we're interested in. Summoning a Spectre is good because these give us um, uh, various paths of magic. There's, they're quite varied there. So get up to that. That's a great way of getting a bit of magical diversity, which we desperately need. And we've got a national spells and things up here. But yeah, um, I think Summon Spectre might be a, quite an important one for us for the amount of uh, stuff we have. We, our research really is going to go quick now. Because if you remember last month, I think it was 80-something. It's 156 now. It's just going to keep rocketing up as we build Skull Mentors. If we get to construction level 6, which we might do at some point, we can make uh, lightless lanterns with our fire gems as well. Yeah, so that's um, pretty much what's going on. I don't think there's ever, there's much else that I want to talk about, so I will see you next turn. Hello again. This is my second time recording this because the audio got messed up the first time, but uh, let's do turn number 23. So we've got uh, a throne has been claimed, um, the name of Berg. Uh, I think that's um, High Elves? I can't remember, to be honest. Got a proclamation from Bretonia. Uh, and there's a point I want to make here about uh, kind of a weird quirk of uh, the Bretonia mod. So there's a commander they can re recruit called Entreat Duke. It costs, I think, about 400 gold. Uh, you recruit just a symbol, basically, a uh, fleur de lis, and then an event will trigger, and it replaces that fleur de lis with a unique duke from a list of them uh, and their own personal army. And if there are no dukes, then you get a grail lord and you get some grail knights. So um, what they've done is they've purchased the Entreat Duke, Bretonia, once they had their fort free for that one turn from the ogres. Uh, but the problem is that when the ogres attacked again and sieged the fort, that happened before the event could trigger. And I wrote the event so that the um, Bretonians basically have to be in control of the province, but I didn't put that in the description. So I feel kind of bad for the Bretonia player. They've basically just wasted 400 gold. I had a talk with them about it. Um, and so they have named it uh, a pitiful last stand, which is quite funny. And uh, they've made it a profit, which uh, I appreciate their good humor there. You know, sometimes in mods, there's something that doesn't quite work right. And uh, that's something that I'll fix by changing the description. So it's very clear to anyone playing in the future that that will happen. Um, to be clear, if they had managed to get the emblem of the Duke and then uh, get their fort out of siege, then they would have had the event trigger and they would have got the Duke. Um, yeah, so just kind of a technical issue. But um, I, this is one of the nice things about playing with these mod nations is I get to have this data on my nations that, you know, me just working away and not seeing other people use them, I just wouldn't pick these things up. So it's kind of like a big beta test of them. But um, I really appreciate people giving me feedback and having kind of good humor when things aren't working quite right. So a bit more blood hunting. We get to witness a battle in Terrace Peaks, uh, which is just a bunch of um, Altdorf Order Knights, the Order of the Griffin, and uh, yeah, they're just taking out some province defense of the Dark Elves. They're just taking one of their provinces that was nicked by raiding elves from them. But two unexpected events, losing some tax in Casador, and a pretty unpleasant loss of gold in Llama. And I'll show you what I'm doing about that in a moment, um, because I really do need to get my gold going and get my infrastructure built. So in Valrest, there's a battle which is uh, just some wolves attacking, and basically it, one or two Doomfire Warlocks would have been able to beat all of these because wolves have terrible magic resistance because they're just animals. So they'd never get through the um, magic resistance checks the Doomfire Warlocks generate. So yeah, not doing anything there. But an interesting thing is to note that the Dark Elves have a troll leader and ten trolls. I guess that's from an event that gives it that to them. They've also got a Jade Priestess, who her, I checked and they had some nature gems. And um, yeah, this, this force is strong enough that they'll be able to siege the fort that they're, uh, that they're in. So if we just go over there and have a look. My hope here is that by sieging this fort, uh, Altdorf isn't going to lose that. They've probably got enough forces that they can move to this province. They're going to gather their forces there. You know, they can move directly from the capital. And then they're probably going to try and retake it. And while they're doing that, we have a lot of stuff sneaking in. So I'll just show you what we've got um, over here. Clan rats and weapons teams. Here we've got clan rats 
pestle and sensor bearers and a weapons team and some more here. Uh, we've not got anything moving to the cap because they might get fought by the patrols there. Over here, storm vermin, clan rats, uh, gutter runners and an assassin, council guard, more clan rats, storm vermin, weapons teams. So pretty nice armies moving in. Uh, down here on the fort, big chunk of council guard and storm vermin. Yeah, so my hope is that I'll be able to um, kind of do a big alpha strike, much like I did on Bretonia, but I think on an even bigger scale here, and I might even uh, try and take the cap off them as well, at least temporarily, and then move away from it when they try and break siege. Don't know that I want to get into a slugging match with Altdorf, but um, yeah, they're just it's just such a juicy target, especially if they're being very distracted down here. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. And I might need to talk to um, Tylea or the Greenskins possibly about that. We Skaven like to do a, a gang up on people. Over here in the Verdant Steppe, we're recruiting uh, Storm Vermes are going, and we're actually recruiting a Warlord, which is kind of an unusual choice because um, it takes two commander points. So I don't get to recruit you know, two commanders. I don't recruit one mage. It's just one military leader. But I'm really feeling that we need some military leaders that can actually do formations because we're just having all these chieftains running around. And I just haven't built a Warlord yet, so I kind of felt like I wanted to do one. They're uh, pretty amazing leaders, really. Uh, yeah, they've got leadership, 120, plus two morale bonus for up to four squads, so and they can do formations. So yeah, very useful. And they're a bit cheaper, and as I say, I'm trying to kind of build up my gold a bit. Um, so I'm actually having Nordwell cast uh, Distill Gold, which turns fire gems into gold. And normally is not a brilliant idea, but um, I'll just show you how much I'll be getting for it. So Distill Gold is 15 gold per gem spent after the initial cost, increased by one for every extra mage level. So you want to have your best fire mage casting it. He's got fire three. He's my best fire mage. It's not amazing, but it's pretty good. So if I put in 25 gems, I should be getting kind of, you know, upwards 400 gold. Um, yeah, and I'm going to use that to, uh, after I've claimed this throne, which I've got my H3 doing there, I'm going to build a temple there. And I'm also considering building another fort down here. We really need to have good infrastructure um, and start cranking out our, you know, cheaper commanders, more efficient commanders, rather than just constantly doing these big guys, which are very expensive. So, I've got Skull Mentors being forged still. I'm forging a Dwarven Hammer with a Dwarven Hammer, so that's three gems total discount on a 15 Earth Gem item, so it costs 12 instead of 15. Um, and that will allow us to get more forging discounts on other commanders. Um, I've talked to the Ogres about getting some boots for my god. My god is going to go with the Amulet of Anti-Magic, uh, and they're just waiting here for a turn until I um, can secure the boots. They're basically helping me with research. I think they're about 10% of my research is just from them, because I've got so much good magic. So yeah, down here I'm um, moving in to secure this area to have a fort here. My diseased, uh, unfortunately diseased Grey Seer is going off to do some site searching. They are very good at site searching with those paths. They can just hop around these. They haven't had any searching. Um, Reaching out some uh, enemy dominion there, I've got rid of that, so I might send them down to help preach this out with Skrulk. I basically just want to make sure my territory's got my dominion on it and generally kind of stay on top of that because it gives my troops morale, it's useful for my god, and so on. Uh, you know, kind of an overlooked part of the game sometimes. And um, yeah, the reason I was so happy to just throw fire gems into gold is because we've got so many. We've got 11 per month, but if you look at our death gem income, 16 per month, it is crazy. So in addition to building all these skull mentors, I also want to be thinking about where I'm going to spend this huge numbers of death gems. So one thing I'm doing on research is uh, going to go to conjuration level five, which gives me the elementals. But uh, if you click on a research path and then press uh, D, that filters it to just uh, death spells. You can, you know, do F for fire, E for earth, etc. So we can see this is going to give us Vermintide, Summon Shade Beast, which isn't super relevant, but we could use them to maybe take some underwater provinces led by a Bane. But uh, yeah, I want to get some Bane Lords going. Um, because we have a Forge discount, so we've gone quite heavily into construction, we could make a bunch of Bane Lord thugs. Uh, they could be useful for taking underwater stuff. Also, if we get to level 6, which is you know slow, but we can get there, we get Ghosts, which of course are also great for taking underwater stuff. And we can get Spectres, and they can be great thugs, the ones that uh, don't have the paths you want, but most importantly, they get you magical diversity, and they're very castable for us. So, um, yeah, I'm very keen on going up Conjuration, having looked at this a bit more closely. 
and just with the number of death terms we have getting all of the getting all the diversity just by pouring death terms into research pouring death terms into summoning specters is going to be very uh, satisfying yeah so that's pretty much what i'm up to stealth invading altdorf hope i don't get caught anywhere if i do i'll just have to spring the uh, attack early got lots of troops coming into support um i've got you can see there actually my scout that i set up so this is a very common thing to do get a scout set up with uh, a bunch of gems so they can resupply people in the field if you don't have a lab nearby and i'm probably going to do that with some more scouts um but yeah i don't really have that many majors attacking at the moment um i have uh, some blood hunting really getting underway here um yeah one blood one hunter and a blood three effectively hunter so starting to get some blood income and using scouts to ferry it back gonna do that in some more provinces you want provinces that are over 5,000 population so Norfangs is a good uh, candidate for that not really our sense because that's such high population I don't want to lose the income from it but um yeah maybe feral woods it's under 5,000 though which isn't ideal uh chibia possibly sleepy mountains possibly yeah there's a few others there's some down here that are um possibility of blood hunting lathian would be a good one to blood hunt so maybe I'll um use the plague priest that I'm getting down here to get some just kind of ongoingly recruiting sacreds because they have lower upkeep and they're just more generally useful but uh, also getting a lot of storm vermin down here with my grace here so um yeah quite a bit going on nothing extremely major this turn but uh we'll see what happens okay thanks for watching and I hope the audio is better this time